1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1, And Samuel said unto all Israel, Behold, I have hearkened unto your voice and all that ye have said unto me, and have made a king over you. And now, behold, the king walketh before you, and I am old and gray-headed. And behold, my sons are with you, and have walked before you from my childhood unto this day. Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken, or whose ass have I taken, or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed, or of whose hand have I received any bribe to blind mine eyes therewith? And I will restore it you. And they said, Thou hast not defrauded us, nor oppressed us, neither hast thou taken all of any man's hand. And he said unto them, The Lord is witness against you, and his anointed is witness this day, that ye have not found all in my hand. And they answered, He is witness. Amen. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron, and that brought your fathers up out of the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still that I may reason with you before the Lord of all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and to your fathers. Mm. We're going to leave off reading there. We're going to take you back and just look at some of these verses this morning. Did you notice the testimony of Samuel? Amen. What a testimony he said. Mm -hmm. He said, Behold, here I am in verse 3, witness against me before the Lord. And he said, Who's, What have I done? He said, You tell what I've done wrong or I've wronged you. And he said, If I've wronged you, I'll make it right. And if anybody here can testify that I've wronged you, then I want to hear it. And everybody stood and, and really proclaimed and said, Boy, that's right. You have done that for us. And what you've said is true. And, and you haven't wronged any of us. Tremendous testimony. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd like to die with that kind of testimony. Oh, yeah, right. I'd like to have that kind of testimony. I'd like for you to have that. Amen. But this morning, what I want you to look at is verse 7, where he said to the people, Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord. Stand still. Amen. Stand still. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. We thank you for the blessings that you've given to us. And Lord, now I pray you'd bless this morning. Help me to give the message that you've given to me, Lord, and uh, that I would say exactly what you want me to say this morning. And Lord, I pray we'd have good attention in the service and that we'd be focused, our hearts and our minds, on the Word of God today. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Stand still. That's a pretty simple command. Right. Uh, it ought to be pretty simple to comply with such a request. <laughs> but such is not the case, you know. Children Amen. have a problem standing still. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe it, you line up a group of kids and try to get them to stand still for any length of time. No. Nope. Say maybe five or ten seconds. All right? <laughs> and it's amazing how much wiggle they've got in them. You know, uh, and uh, they, they just can't do it. But we say, well, that's kids. Well, I've noticed there's a lot of people the same way. Right. A lot of people the same way. Brother Jerry Chandler's a good friend of mine. And uh -huh. uh, Jerry uh -huh. comes to church from time to time. And he grew up in our church as a teenager, rode the bus, and uh, through his high school years. But old Jerry fidgets. He's a fidgeter. <laughs> and uh, you get around him and talk to him, he can't stand still, all right? He just can't do it. Uh, I've uh, I've gone and played golf with him. He even fidgets on the golf course, all right? Uh, but he's just that kind of guy. It's hard for him to stand still. But here's the Word of God. Uh, and, and the Lord, through Samuel, was saying to those people, you stand still because I need to reason with you, all right, before the Lord. And uh, that little command, stand still, there, there's times we need to do that. Amen. There's times it would be to our benefit if we'd learn to stand still. Amen. There's times I believe that each and every one of us <clears throat> need to stand still so that our God can deal with us. Right. Stand still. Now I just want to use that this morning. I want to look at several places in the Bible and I want to reason with you out of the Word of God. Now let's stand still. The first one's in the book of Numbers. If you have your Bible, would you turn back to Numbers chapter 9? Numbers chapter 9 there. And I want you to notice what the Word of God says. Uh, 
in Numbers chapter 9. Uh, the Lord is speaking here. He's speaking to Moses. And, and uh, he, if you will, notice in verse 8, And Moses, after he hears from God, Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes you need to stand still and hear. Stand right. still right. and hear. Right. God wanted to speak to the children of Israel then. You know what? He wants to speak to you and I today. Right. He's got something to say to us, all right? My soul, how we need to hear from Him today in this day of such spiritual ignorance and such spotty thinking and such spectacular problems. Yes, we need to hear from God. Amen. We need to hear what God has to say to us. And uh, you look around, people are at offering answers to the problems everywhere. There's all kinds of people coming forward and uh, giving their uh, offer for the answer. We have two people running for president, and both of them professed to have the answer. Right, right. Uh, but before that, there was a multitude of people running for president, and all of them said, right. we've got right. the answer. Go. We've got the answer. But I notice when I get out into that great bastion of intelligence, the barbershop, yes, sir. Oh, yeah. uh, when you're sitting in the barbershop, there everybody there, there has the That's answer. Right. And I, I've never been in the beauty shop. I don't know what you call it today, all right? Uh, it was a beauty shop when I was a kid. Right. Uh, the hair salon or whatever. I don't know about you ladies. Maybe, you know, y'all, you same thing. Everybody has the answer in the barbershop. Everybody has the answer for all the problems there are, all right? Just there everywhere, unfortunately. Unfortunately, those answers, for the most part, do not contain the wisdom of God. Right. Mm -hmm. The wisdom of God. Right. Uh, we've got two people running for president. I don't think they either one. Now, you can get mad at me if you want to. Other Great, people right. have. Uh, but I don't think either one of them have much of a right. grip on the wisdom of God. Right. Uh, they just don't have that. And... Uh, and so I, I question their answers. But what God tells us and says to us today is stand still and hear the Lord. Mm -hmm. Stand still and hear what He's got to say. You know what the problem is though? We're so busy. Mm. We're so busy in life. And uh, man, uh, there's so many that they think they're just way too busy to stand still and listen. Now, if you can catch me on the go, on the flyby, I'll hear it. No, we need to stand still and listen. People are running all over the place. They're chasing dreams. They're pursuing money. Oh yeah. Boy, are they forevermore following fun in this day? All right, right. But to stand still and hear what God has to say, boy, it's hard to get them to do that. Come on, brother. Hard Preach. to get them to do it. Preach. Pulling teeth is easier today than it is to get people. To read the Bible and hear from God. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's hard to get people to do that. Uh, we've got a Bible reading calendar. We passed it out. Try to give it out to everybody that will take one. It's an encouragement to get you to read the Word of God and, and uh, to get into the Bible and see what the Bible has to say. Why? Well, we need to hear from God. Amen. We need to hear from God. Listen, you can turn on the news and hear from Matt Lauer. Oh yeah. All right. Or Katie Couric. Or whoever else is on. Uh, Peter Jennings, maybe, if he's still on. I don't know. And you can turn the news on. You can hear from all those people. Uh, nowadays, you can turn the news on or, and you can turn the television on. You can hear from, uh, uh, you know, Donald Trump. We can turn on and hear from Hillary Clinton. Well, folks, what we need to do is hear from God. Right. We need to hear from God. We need to hear what he's got to say. The truth of the matter is you and I have got problems that the politicians can't solve. Amen. They don't have the answer for. No. And, and all the, the, the purveyors, you know, of prognostication that purvey all this stuff over the radio, television, they don't have the answer for it. No. Right. But God does. Right. God has the answer. I believe, I believe what I'm saying with all this within me, I believe the answer to every one of our problems, every problem that you have, every problem that I have, I believe we'd listen to God. God has the answer yes, for Yes, sir. Yeah. He said, well, my problem is physical. I believe God's Word has something Amen. to say to you. Amen. I believe God's Word has something mm -hmm. to say to you. Somebody says, well, my problem is financial. Well, let's all raise our hand right there, okay? Yeah. Man, my problem is financial.
show. Well, okay. I'm, I believe with all my heart, God's Word's got something to say. Amen. Yes, sir. No, well, mine's mental. God's got something to say to you. Right. So, well, we've got problems in our family and in our home. God has something to say right. to you. Right. Yeah. Well, preacher, I've got problems because of, uh, of my age, and, and age is brought on problems. I just want to tell you, God's Word's got something to say to you. Right. Amen. We need to stand still and hear from God. Hey, there's so much opposition today to standing still to hear the message from God. So much opposition. And one of the great places to come to hear the message from God is the house of God. Right. Amen. Listen, you're, if you come to church here, you're not going to hear me stand up and give you my marvelous philosophy <laughs> and all the things I've figured out in life. Right. Folks, I'll be honest, I don't have the answer. No. But God has. Right. God has the answer. And what we do really on Sunday morning from 10 until 11 is try to get people to stand still and hear from God. Right. And from 11 until 12. And sometimes it goes a little past 12. <laughs> but in that time, what we're trying to do, you know, we're trying to get people to stand still and hear from right. God. Right. Here we go. Well, it's hard to get people to do that. You knock on their door. We go up and down the streets. We knock on the doors of folks and we try to talk to them back to the church. Whoa, I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. Good, this man got too many things good. Amen. I'm not interested. Amen. Right. Boy, you can look at people and tell they've got terrible problems. Right. Right. But they don't want to hear from God. Right. Don't want to hear from God. Uh, because of that, it, it's affected churches. Mm -hmm. it, it's so difficult. It's, it's not easy to get people to show up in church. Right. It's just not easy to get them to do it. And, and a lot of churches have gone <laughs> to entertainment. Mm -hmm. And then they try oh, to sneak yeah. in somewhat of a spiritual tidbit oh, yeah. from time to time. But right. Most of the time right. we just entertain you. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm trying to hear to help Amen. you, get you to hear right. from God. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Well, we need to stand still and see what God's got to say. What does He have to say to us? Stand still and hear and hear. Hey, but that's not all. Would you look in 1 Samuel chapter 9? Now, we were there in 1 Samuel chapter 12, but I want you to look in 1 Samuel chapter 9. And look at verse 27. 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 27. And as they were going down to the end of the city, Samuel said to Saul, Bid the servant pass on before us, and he passed on. But stand thou still a while, that I may show thee the word of God. Huh. Hey, you know, what he's saying is, listen, I need you to stand still so you can see something. Yeah. Right. So you can see something. Uh, you can just do it. God wanted to show some things to Saul, but he needed to get him to stand still so he could see him. Right. You know, it's hard to see much when you're driving along at 90 miles an hour. Right, right. And by the way, if you're going to drive 90, would you please pay attention to the road, all right? <laughs> yeah. Don't be spectating out there. Amen. When I was a kid, my, my brother and I here, we, we were kids. We, we lived in Georgia. And uh, my dad's parents lived in Georgia. My mom's parents, that set of grandparents, lived in Texas, southeast Texas. And so every year, or, or pretty much like that, somewhat like that, we would make a vacation from uh, Georgia to Texas. Hmm. And then later we moved to Florida. When we moved to Florida, we had two options for vacation. <laughs> we could come to Texas or we could go back to Georgia. Uh -huh. All right. Now, I don't know if you, you've ever been in this situation. When I was a kid, we were driving in the car, all right? Yeah. And uh, well, by the way, just this is going to shock some of you younger folks. <laughs> we didn't have a DVD. Amen. <laughs> we didn't have a DVD player at all. All right, and uh, there wasn't anybody on. On we couldn't say slip in a slip in a movie and let the kids watch that. Yeah. Keep them entertained. We had to entertain ourselves. Yeah. There you go. All right. And so one of the things you did was looked out the window. Yeah. And I remember passing those billboards. You remember all those billboards advertising all that stuff? Oh yeah. yeah. And I remember saying, "Boy, why don't we stop there?" Yeah. Man, that sounds like fun. <laughs> we saw it all, 65 miles an hour. All right? Dad didn't believe in stopping anywhere. We didn't stop. 
Then we started going to Florida. Man, if you've ever driven the roads in Florida, there's all kinds of attractions oh, in yeah, Florida. Oh, everywhere. Yeah. I mean, there were rattlesnake farms. There was the Wiki Wachee Springs. Yeah. The, yeah. the Spring of White Mermaid. Yeah. yeah. Who wouldn't want to see that, all right? <laughs> and, and all of those signs were there on the road, man, and we'd drive past all that stuff, and I, I remember saying, Dad, can we stop? No. Nope. Nope. I can't have stopped any of them. I never saw the Spring of Light Mermaids until my brother and I went back to Florida by ourselves. We stopped in, and I found out my dad never would stop. That dad was a smart guy, all right? But we did get to see the diving pig, all right? And that was truly sensational. But you know, our problem, man, when we were kids, we were, hey, we're, we're on vacation, and vacations are going to be in Texas. Yeah. Right. Our vacation's going to be in Georgia. Right. And whatever we pass between there, you can see all of it you want to if you just keep looking out the window. But we're yeah. driving by 65 miles an hour. <laughs> now, you don't get a good view of stuff like that, all right? Right, right. Listen, can I say this? There's things God wants you to see. Uh -huh. But we're so busy in this old world today that we're flying by. Amen. Life's flying by. Amen. There's things Amen. we need to stand still and take a look at. Amen. So many people I believe today miss what God wants them to see because we're just speeding through life. Yeah. Let me just throw a few out there. We miss time spent with our children. Right. Mm -hmm. Miss time spent with our children. Amen. Say, I'm going to tell you something, buddy. Yeah. Once they're grown, it's too late. Right. No. You can't go back. No. Nope and enjoy that time. Uh -huh. Hey, I know, I know, I got one of them TV deals, you can back up, pause, right. live TV, uh -huh. you can back it up and watch it again. I'm telling you, it doesn't work that way in life. No, no. Sir. amen. When your kids are grown, they're grown. Yes, sir. Right. You need to enjoy it wherever they are in life right now, enjoy that time. Amen. Right. Enjoy that time. I've told my son, uh, he, he's got a little boy, be two in October, and uh, I've said, man, you eat it up right now. You enjoy that time. Amen. Amen. You enjoy that time. Enjoy it all. You know, some people are always wishing, well, I wish they were older. Yeah. yeah. I wish they were older. Man, if he was a little bit older, we'd go fishing together. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, he's two, you can use him as bait. All right? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, you can still go fishing. No, listen, we, we, we're like that in life. We want to speed everything up. Man, if he's a little bigger, we can play football. I can play catch with him. Right. Now he can't tell what direction he's going to throw, which direction it'll go in. <laughs> no, listen, you enjoy that time. Yes, sir. Amen. You make sure you don't miss those time with those kids. Amen. You, you need to enjoy it. Boy, sometimes, man, we, we've got our life all figured out, and we don't take time for our children. What a mistake. You get kids to enjoy it. Enjoy them while you can. Mm -hmm. Hey, let me tell you something. What else people do? We miss time with our spouse. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. We lose sight of the value of each other. Mm -hmm. Lose right. sight of the value of each other. What a mistake. Amen. What a mistake. I've been married now for 35 years. And as I look back on those 35 years, our kids are grown, they're gone. Right. Mm -hmm. They're out of the house. And I don't want them back. <laughs> now I enjoyed them while they were there. Right. But I don't want them to move back. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they're doing good. They're doing what they want and what God wants them to do. And that's wonderful. But wait a minute. I'm still married to that same wife. Sure. Right. And in those years when we were raising children, I didn't lose sight of the value of my wife. Amen. Amen. But some people, we do. Hmm. And we get so caught up. Listen, I know we live in a very expensive world to live in. Right. Boys, it's expensive <clears throat> to live. Takes a lot of money. You say, man, everybody has to work to make the money to live, and, and we just kind of see each other in passing, you know? Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, I, I'd work at that. I'd try to change that. Amen. Every way I could. Uh, when you do that, if you're not real careful, you lose sight of the value of your husband or your wife. Mm -hmm. And I think I've seen a lot of people do that, and then they split. Mm -hmm. And then they go marry another one that doesn't have the problems that one had. And you know what they find out? They're right. They didn't have the problems that other one had. 
they've got a whole new set of problems, all right? And if we all got them, right. don't lose sight of the value of that husband or that wife God's given you and blessed you with. Spend some time with each other. Mm -hmm. Spend some time with each other. Family, spend time together. Right. And I don't mean sitting at the table and everybody on their phone. <laughs> oh, my word. Amen. You ought to borrow those things from the table. Right. You ought to just get rid of it, it irks me to see families out, and they're, here they are, they're walking, in, maybe they're walking into a restaurant or something, and, and they got the kids, and the kids have got their phone in their hand, the earplugs in their ears from their phone, and I'm thinking, boy, it's going to be a delightful meal together. What a conversation they're going to have. Yeah, right? I want to just go over and snatch those earplugs out. And say, I'll tell you something, there's a life outside that thing in your hand. Amen. Hey, don't lose sight of it. We miss some things. Why? Because we don't stand still to see. Hey, wait a minute. We don't stand still to see what God's done for us. Don't stand still to see what God's done for us. Hey, God's kept us healthy. Right. God's kept us healthy. In the midst of all the things that are going around, you ever stop to think about how many diseases you could get? Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes, and then every now and then in the news hmm. media, they, they, they come up with an idea we need to show people how bad germs are. Right. And right. so they take swabs, all these oh, places yeah. that we yeah. go into and out of, and they swab everything right. and say, we just want you to know where the germs are. Yeah. We know they're out there. <laughs> Man, if you listen to that, we'd all wear gloves, yeah. a mask, and hardly ever get out of the house. <laughs> hey, but you ever stop to think what God's done for you? He's kept you healthy. Amen. All Amen. the diseases you could have got, you don't have. Right. You don't have. Hmm. Hey, there's some of you sitting here this morning that you're, you're troubled physically. You're troubled physically. I mean, you've got some health <clears throat> issues. Right. But I want to tell you something. You ever notice the grace God gives you to get you through it? Amen. You ever notice the grace God gives you to get you through it? Do you see that? Hmm. Hey, your car's still running? All right. Your car's still running? Except Ms. McFaith. Hers in the shop. All right. <laughs> she told me this morning. But the other one's running, right? So we're okay. Hey, that, that's amazing. Uh, I remember as a kid growing up, we never had, we had one car. Right. One car, though. When I was a kid, we, we never had more than one car. My mom and dad never had more than one car. They never have, except a very short stretch of time. I remember they had two vehicles. Well, that was after my brother and I were grown. Mm. But now, today, you go buy houses, and it looks like a used oh, car. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You can tell they've got eight. Mom's got a car, dad's got a car, and three of the kids got a car, all right? A different <laughs> one. And, and they're everywhere. Hey, listen. You ever stop to see, stand still, see, hey, the car's still running. Mm -hmm. It's still running. It's there. Hey, there's food on the table. Right. There's food on the table. I've got a roof over my head. I'm able to get around. You ever stop and think about that and see what God's done, how he's protected you from disease and disaster? What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying stand still and see. Come on. What God's done for you. Hey, stand still and hear. Stand still and see. Go with me, if you will, to Job chapter 37. Job chapter 37, if you would. Right before the book of Psalms is the book of Job. Job chapter 37. I want you to look down at verse 14. There's Job chapter 37. Job chapter 37. Now, if you want to read a book that is interesting, the book of Job Amen. is a very interesting book. Amen. Job 37, verse 14. The Bible says, Hearken to this, O Job. Stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Amen. Stand still and consider. That word consider means think. Right. Think. Man, thinking has become a lost art. Come on, huh. Folks do the dumbest things imaginable, and when you ask them why you did it, oh, no. they say, well, I just didn't think yes, yeah. that that would happen. Right. You ever watch the 
America's Funniest Home Video <laughs> Some of them need to be called America's Dumbest People. Yep, I hear you. I hear you. Because we do stuff. Uh -huh. We do stuff with no thought that this could go wrong. Mm -hmm. I watch things on, on you know, I sometimes watch those shows like that. I'm thinking, surely they thought about this before time. Right. Surely there was consideration. This may not work out real good. <laughs> and, and you see it and you go, my word. Right. And, and if you would ask them, hey, why'd you, well, I didn't think. Right. Amen. I just didn't think. Mm. I, I've asked a lot of kids, why'd you do that? Well, I didn't think that would happen. <laughs> I didn't think it'd turn out like that. And some of them I've tried to say kindly. I said, you know, I think the problem is you just didn't think. I right. just didn't think. Hey, listen. Hmm. Think about it. Notice what the Bible says. Would you stand still and consider, think about the wondrous works of God. Hmm. You ever think about that? Yeah. Think about creation. Amen. Amen. Think about creation. Now, maybe you, you, you're like me. You, you had the disadvantage. You grew up with an education where they thought it's necessary for them to convince you that evolution was true. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, fine. Yeah. But would you look in, in would you look in Job chapter thirty-eight, <coughs> verse sixteen, verse sixteen. Notice what God said to Job here, verse sixteen: Hast thou entered? into the springs of the sea. Come on. Hmm. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea? Now, hmm, the book of Job was written about 1,500 years before right. Christ. Right. right. Amen. And the book of Job, God asked Job, have you entered into the springs of the sea? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, for years, nobody knew there were springs in the sea. Right. Matter of fact, it's been really within my lifetime. I can remember when they got all excited when National Geographic came out with it, and it was on the news, and it was on these special, you know, documentary, and they took you way down into the sea where it's it was permanently dark all the time, and they lit it up, and, and you saw these springs in the sea. And some of it just boil and stuff coming out. But it was just a guess on the part of the book of Job. All right. Uh -huh. Said, I didn't know it was there. Because the one that said it's the one that put him there. All right. Amen. That's why. That's why. Look at verse 19 in Job chapter 38. Where is the way where light dwelleth? You know, uh, most of us, I never have come to anybody and say, hey, where's the way you live? I know. You ever ask anybody that? Where's the way you live? Uh-uh. What do we always say? We say, where's the place you live? All right. right. Is this the place you live in? Yeah. We don't come to your house and say, this is a beautiful way. <laughs> yeah. We come to your house and say, it's a gorgeous place, man. Right. Gorgeous home. We don't say that. You say, why in the world would the Bible say it? Where is the way where light dwelleth? Because light's so different. Mm -hmm. If you talk to the great scientists, they cannot agree if light is a particle, okay? They, they, they don't know if it's a light wave or light particles. And they argue about that. And guess what? You know, try to grab you a box full of light. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay? Uh -huh. Just grab you, go out somewhere, and, and get out in the brightest sunlight you can, and have you this box, okay? This box that you can slam the lid down on, and it'll be tight. You can't get in or out. And then go into the darkest cavern, have them turn the lights off, and open that box and see that light. No. <laughs> now, every one of you in here is saying, Preacher, you have gone nuts. <laughs> right, All right. There won't be any light in that box. Nope. That's right. <clears throat> Because the man that made it, the one who made the light, on, knew it was the way where light dwells. Amen. And you can't hold it in a box. Right. You can't control it. So what are you saying? I'm saying, do you ever stop to think about creation, the wonderful works of creation that God has made? 
Look at verse 24. By what way is the light parted? Hmm. Now remember, this 1,500 years before Christ, they had never had anybody lay down one of them deals that you could beam a light ray in and it would split it into the, the spectrum of those oh, different yeah. colors. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you see, the one that made the light knew you could do that. Right. He knew you could do that. Look, if we will, all right, uh, in verse 25. Who hath divided a water course for the overflowing of waters or a way for the lightning of thunder? Hmm. Now, you may not know this, and I didn't know it for years, but lightning, we've stood and we've seen those big strikes of lightning. You know, right. you're driving along, and then all of a sudden it comes straight down. Right. Now, nobody did, knew it until they could photograph that in slow motion and slow it down right. enough that before that lightning comes down, there's a little wave that's made down for that straight of lightning. And then the lightning comes. Hmm. The wondrous works of God. Have you ever stop and think about it? Have hmm. you ever stop and think about yourself? How God made you. Right, right. He made you different from everybody else. Mm -hmm. Job chapter 37 and verse 7 talks about he sealeth up the hand of every man. Every man's hand is different. Right. Yours is different from mine. Mm -hmm. That's why we can fingerprint people. We can fingerprint people and identify every individual from their fingerprints. That's right. Because none of them are alike. Amen. None of them are alike. Mm -hmm. He sealeth up the hand. God did that. Right. Now, you ever stop and think about the wondrous creation that you are? God created you right. and made you the way He did. Yeah. And, and every, the, 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 mm. the systems in your body and how it all works. Right. I don't know about you, but it just blows my mind if I stop and think about it. Right. And then to have some guy with a PhD stand up and tell me, hey, it's all a result of accident yes, <laughs> and evolution and down through the years. If you'd have been here Wednesday night, you'd have heard me read from great scientists that are telling us why we can't find alien life. <laughs> it's because life on this earth was really premature. Oh, is that what it was? And there just hadn't been enough time yet for oh, life to show up in other world. Okay. You know why we can't find life out there? Because God put it here. That's right. Amen. The great creator did that. Amen. I'm be honest with you, I sort of feel sorry for those guys. Amen. Yes, sir. God did it. Mm -hmm. The work of creation. I've been and stood in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Jackson Hole, Wyoming is yep. one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You go there and you can find water that's actually clear. Right. Mm -hmm. You can go up to a stream and see the bottom. Right. Not like the Trinity. <laughs> no. You know. Sure not. Hey, you can actually see the bottom. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I've got a picture that I took my brother and I were on vacation up there. It was early one morning, and man, it was absolutely still. Oh, yeah. mm. And I've got a picture, and I honest, you could flip the picture upside down, and it looks the same way because I took a picture across the lake of the Teton Mountain, and that lake is absolutely still, oh, wow. and the reflection matches that. Beautiful. And I look at that, and I think, man, look what God did. Right, right. Look what God did. Hmm. Stand still and think. Think about creation. Hey, can I ask you to think about something else? Think about salvation. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Think yes. about salvation. Wonderful thing. You think about that. Do you realize God produced the payment? Mm -hmm. He produced right. the payment. He sent His Son. Right. And then He paid the price. He had his son go to Calvary and shed his blood to pay the price of our salvation. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Then he provided the plan. Mm -hmm. Right. He provided the plan. His plan is simple. Whosoever will. Yes. Right. Whosoever will. If you'll believe, you'll repent, you'll call on me, I'll save you. Right. Amen. Hey, that's our Lord. Right. Ever stop and think about his salvation? Mm -hmm. I, I talk to people everywhere. 
talked to so many people and I said, listen, if you were to die, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? By the way, good thing for you to consider. Right. Uh -huh. yep. right. If you were to die today, do you know for sure you'd go to heaven? <clears throat> I had somebody tell me just last week, man, well, you can't really know that. Okay. I said, well, the Bible says you can. That's right. Yes, says you can. But most of the time, the answer I, most of the answers I've got is yes, I think I would. I say, why do you think you would? And they say, well, because I'm a good person. Right, right. And I try to live a good life, and I try to be kind. Mm -hmm. I say, that's good. I said, well, listen, you know that Jesus Christ, you heard of him? Yeah. He said, you know he came, he died on the cross. I said, why did he die? And it's amazing to me how many of those people that have just told me what they've said will say, well, he died for our sin. Yeah, right. And I have to look at them and say, well, wait a minute. Come on, you just told me you're going to heaven because of what you've done. Right. If you can get there because of what you've done, why did he die? That's right. Amen. Good. Why did he die? Mm -hmm. right. Why did he have to die if you can get to heaven doing what you do? Yeah. And I got news for you. I can't. Yeah. And according to the word of God, you can't. Yeah. But you know what? You ever think about his salvation? Mm. Yeah. Stand still and consider. He had the plan all along. He provided Amen. the payment. He produced it. All right. He paid the price when he went to Calvary. And he shed his blood there for you and I. And then the plan's real simple. Will you trust me? Amen. Will you Amen. trust me? Yeah. Stand mm. still. Amen. And see the wondrous works of mm. God. Oh, the God of creation is amazing. Amen. <clears throat> I, I look at those planets and they, they've taken those pictures of them mm -hmm. and send them back. I look at the pictures that are made of different nebula and different galaxies and mm -hmm. that have been made through telescopes and there are some absolutely gorgeous pictures. Oh yeah. You say, why did God put all of that out there if there's not life? He put it out there for you and I to admire. Mm -hmm. He put it there for us to admire and see right. it. Stand still. Consider the wondrous works of God. Creation's amazing, but wait a minute, I'll tell you, salvation's even more amazing. Yes, that God yes. will love a sinner Come on, yes. like me. Amen. Mm -hmm. That he would love a sinner who had turned God, looked at man, man turned his back on God. Yes, right. We've taken everything he's commanded us to do and we've just said we don't want to do it. We're going to do our thing. Amen. Turned our back on God. And we've walked our own path. We've done our own thing. But he still loved us. Amen. Amen. And even the Bible said while we were yet sinners, Christ died right. for us. Amen. Right. Well, I tell you, would you think about that a little bit? Mm. Would you think about this, and I'm done, your destination. Your destination. Hey, where are you going? Mm -hmm. Where are you going? If you keep living like you are right now, where's it going to take you? Oh, my. Richard, I'm going to be wealthy. And I'm going to live in a mansion <coughs> that you could only imagine. I've already got it planned out. I, I've got the mansion, the floor plan laid out. <coughs> hey, I don't know. I, I've seen some magnificent homes. Magnificent homes. Uh, we're on vacation, I've been to a lot of mansions that were built by wealthy individuals. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous places with more rooms than you can live in. All right? There they are. And said, Preacher, that's me. I'm going to live in a place like that. I, I'm going to live in a place like that. And it's going to be, you know, I, I've seen houses going for six, seven, eight, ten, twenty million dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Preacher, I'm going to live like that. That's where I'm going. Okay. Who's going to get it when you kick off? Amen. Right. Where are you going then? What's your destination? Mm -hmm. What's your destination? Well, where are you headed, huh? What, where's it going to take you? Well, I'll be satisfied, will you? Mm. Will you find fulfillment? Really? And the question is, will it take you to heaven? Right. Yeah. Will it take you to heaven? Yeah. And it won't do it unless it comes through the cross. Listen, I've got another point in my sermon. <coughs>
according to the clock, it's a little after 12. I'm going to save that last point, and uh, let me just take you over to Psalms chapter 46, would you? Psalms chapter 46. I'm going to wind up the message. Psalms 46, verse 10. The Bible says, Be still and know that I am God. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Hey, listen, can I say this to you as tenderly as I know how? You're not God. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm not God. Right. God's God. Mm -hmm. And He's the one that's made the rules. And he's the one that's determined how it's all going to come out. Right. You do not have to believe the book that He's written and left for us. No. You do not. You can ignore it. You surely can. Yeah, right. You can decide it's not for me. Yeah. I've talked to a lot of people that way. Not for me. Yeah, right. Not interested. Not interested. Mm -hmm. Hey, you can live that way. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, the one great equalizer of everybody is death. That's right. Right. Yes, sir. Is death. Mm -hmm. And I got news for you. You can deny God. Robert Ingersoll was a very, very famous atheist in his day. But you know what? He knows today that God is God. Right. The only problem is he waited too long to find yeah. out. Mm -hmm. He waited too long to admit it. The Bible said, be still and know that I am God. Listen, he's the one that created this world and everything that's in it. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's provided the plan of salvation. Yeah. And you're not going to come over God and do it your way. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to do things his way. Yes, right. sir. That same God's going to stand one day and you're going to stand before Him yep. face to face. Mm -hmm. There will be nothing hidden. There will be nothing that you can say, well, wait a minute, you can't excuse it because He knows it all. Right. He right. knows everything. I caught two girls one time in our Christian school breaking a rule and I they didn't know I saw them, and I had them come up to the office. And I had them sit down. I'm kind of a cruel guy. <laughs> okay. I had them sit down across the table, and I said, okay, I just want to know which one of you is going to be willing to admit to, and I said, what was going on? And you've never seen such innocent looks in all your life. <laughs> Those two girls looked at each other. You think we would do that? And I'm sitting there going, yeah, I, you, you did. Oh, Brother Lord, we didn't do that. We didn't, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. And I let that go on for probably five or ten minutes until finally I said, listen, just quit lying. And I told them where I was when I saw them and where they were and exactly how it went on. And then those... <laughs> 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 Sure changed. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to stand on this earth and shake your fist in the face of God. Yeah. Oh my! But it's another thing if you're standing in front of Him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's right. It's another thing if you're standing in front of Him. Mm -hmm. Would you stand still today and hear the voice of God? Just stand together, if you would, this morning. Would you stand still and hear God? Would you stand still and take a look and see what He's done for you? Would you just consider it? Would you think about it this morning? Just take that time to consider, hey, look what He's done for me. Look at the plan of salvation He's provided. Have you trusted Him as your Savior? If you haven't, would you do it this morning? Would you do it today? Would you have the courage in just a moment as we sing the song of invitation, would you have the courage to step out, walk down the aisle, meet me here at the front and say, Preacher, I want to trust Christ. I've never done it, but I want to trust Him as my Savior. Just have the courage to do that. We'll have somebody take the Bible and show you. You say, Preacher, everybody thinks I'm saved. Forget what everybody thinks. Amen. Yes, sir. It's going to be you before God, and it's not going to matter then what anybody thinks. Yes, sir. It's not going to matter what you thought. 
It's going to matter, did you do what God said? Right. Amen. I plead with you this morning, would you do that? Christian, you're here, you've been saved, but the truth is, you don't stop very much to consider what God wants from you. Amen. Could it get you to stop just a minute this morning and take a look at your own life and how you're living? Hey, is it please Him? Maybe there's some things going on shouldn't be going on. What you need to do, we begin to sing. You need to step out. You need to come to this altar and ask God to forgive you. And you need to change it. Heavenly Father, I pray now you deal with every heart this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the Word of God. Help us to stand still a moment and think about what you've done for us. And Lord, think about our needs. Lord, help us to be honest with ourselves and honest with you. Lord, there's some Christians here. If they were honest, they'd realize I'm not living the way he wants me to live. But I want to live that way. Lord, help them to come. Confess their sin and get it right with you. Lord, there's somebody here this morning that needs to trust Christ as their Savior. They've never been saved. Lord, would you help them to come today? Speak to every heart, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.